Okay, the lungs. It's a organ for respiration, exchange of gases, and even elimination of waste. We inspire carbon dioxide and we eliminate, I'm sorry, we inspire oxygen and we eliminate carbon dioxide. So, normal lung. I told you the cardinal function is exchange of gases between inspired air, which is oxygen and blood. This uh, embryology, this is an outgrowth from the ventral wall of foregut. And there are two lateral outpocketings, the lung buds. The left has three branches, therefore there are three lobes. And the right has two branches and two lobes. So the lingula is the middle equivalent. The equivalent of the third lobe there is the lingula, the middle lobe equivalent. Do you agree? Do you agree, Pramakov? Yes, no. Thank you, Pramakov. What? You said the lingula is the equivalent of the third lobe? Yes. Now, do you agree with this slide now? Yeah. Oh, okay, okay. So the right has three branches. There are three lobes. The upper lobe, the middle lobe. Sorry, the upper lobe, the middle lobe, and the lower lobe. The left has two branches. Therefore, there are two lobes. And the lingula is the middle lobe equivalent in the left lung. But if I'll be asking you, how many sections are there in the lungs? How many surgical sections are there in the lungs? It's 10. Both lobes has 10, even though one has three. I, both, yes, both left and right lobe have 10 even if you said it is divided by into three lobes the one at the right and two lobes the one at the left so the normal lung the right main stem bronchus is more vertical and more directly in line with the trachea why mostly foreign objects are lodged at the right main stem bronchus the bronchioles, progressive branching of the bronchi, distinguished by lack of cartilage and submucosal gland. Now, I'll be asking you, for example, you have a patient accidentally swallowed a coin. How would you say that the coin is lodged on the bronchus or in the trachea rather than in the esophagus? Uh, so, if it's um, like, if the x-ray is uh, straight, it's um, in the... It's in the esophagus, or okay. in, and then if it's in the trachea, it you'll see it round. You'll see round. Wait. I mean, like you? No. Okay. If you see it flat, it's in the trachea because it might lodge in the what divisions of the part of the cartilage in the bronchus or in the trachea. But in the esophagus, you'll see the circular shape. You understood? So the normal lungs, the terminal bronchioles, further branching of the bronchioles, less than 2 mm in diameter. The asinus, part of the lungs, distal to the terminal bronchiole, approximately spherical, about 7 mm in diameter. What's the importance of this diameter? In autopsy, this diameter is very important when we are dealing with what? people who has COPD, asthma, who died from asthma or COPD. So the normal lungs, this is now the respiratory part. There are two parts of the, of the respiratory system. There is a conduction system and a respiratory system or the respiratory part and the conduction part. The conduction part is just the movement of air, oxygen or carbon dioxide. No exchange of gases. But once you go to the respiratory part, there will be exchange of gases. Respiratory bronchioles 
is the first part or the respiratory part going to an alveolar duct and alveolar sac and the the whole part the alveolar duct and the alveolar sac the whole part of that is part of the alveolus and the alveolar sac is the site main site for gas exchange where in oxygen will be going to the blood and carbon dioxide will be excreted or yes excreted so the entire respiratory tree except for the vocal cords which is lined by stratified squamous epithelium non-keratinized remember that why once there will be keratinization of the vocal cords there could be what infection like candidiasis fungal or malignancy like uh, squamous cell carcinoma lined by pseudostratified tall columnar ciliated epithelial cells also all the respiratory tree pseudostratified tall columnar ciliated epithelial cell with goblet cells at the upper portion heavily admixed with cartilaginous airways with mucus these are what secreting goblet cells neuroendocrine cells exhibit neural secretory venues this is why when there is a malignancy those neuroendocrine cells are what small cells of the lungs that's why when there is malignancy like a small cell carcinoma it secretes some secretory endocrine system like what catecholamines so this is now the alveolus where in there the exchange of gases is seen the capillary endothelium in the capillary endothelium there will be a podocyte or there will be spaces for the gases to freely pass basement membrane and surrounding interstitial tissue the alveolar epithelium the type 1 pneumocyte the type 2 pneumocyte and the alveolar macrophages which is what the defense of your lungs for foreign object and mostly what is the most common uh, foreign body that is being ingested by this alveolar macrophage yes. what is the most common Dust. 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 Anyone else? Is Michelle here? Carbon monoxide. Carbon monoxide? The smoke ingredients. Yes. The smoke. Smoke. More on carbon. So when there is when the macrophage phagocytose carbon what do you call that you call that anthracosis yes tony anthracosis so normal lungs alveolar walls are not solid but perforated by numerous pores of con which permit the passage of bacteria and exudate between adjacent alveoli that's why if you have pneumonia or pulmonary abscess there will be passage of what of the pus in the lungs it's easy to go from one surgical division to another so this is a lung with a heart as you can see this is your what left lobe and you can appreciate your sorry your lingula is cut here and this is your right lobe and this is a lungs of from a baby or a child compared to a lungs of an adult as you can see can i ask you first is this a left lobe or a right lobe the one that i'm showing now left left lobe. left left why left, left? right lobe uh, who says now right <laughs> 
it's a left left <laughs> mouse of the lingula. Do you appreciate the lingula? Okay, the lingula. And what else? There are only what? Two lobes. Two lobes. Two lobes. Two lobes. Yes. Two lobes. So you mean left lung or right lung? Yes. Okay. Again, a higher magnification of the left lung. Uh, no, a close-up picture of the left lung. As you can see, what is this? The bronchus. Bronchioles. With the what? You can appreciate the veins and the artery. The artery. artery is much more circular and the veins is much more thinner. It's, oh, sorry. The artery is much more thicker and the veins is much more thinner. And you'll be appreciating some what? Cartilage from the bronchus. This is again another lungs. We're in, you can appreciate the trachea going down. Now I'll ask you, what lobe is this? The one at the pointer. Left. Why left? Left. Why left? Two lobes. Two lobes? What Two else? Lobes. Good. What yeah. else? There's one more to say Angle that. Of the trachea. Yes, but yeah, and you'll see what the bronchus is much more horizontal compared to yes. a bronchus. Yes, sir. Okay, the microscopic appearance you can appreciate the hyaline cartilage or the bronchus. You'll be seeing what's the lining epithelium again. Pseudostatified. Keratinized. No, pseudostatified only. Pseudostatified. Lining epithelium. And this submucosa where you can appreciate some submucosal glands. Again, now you can appreciate the pseudostatified. There is cilia. And there is what? Goblet cells. Can you see the mouse? I'm pointing. Can you see yes. the mouse? Yes. yes, sir. Okay. And this is your glands. What's the function of the glands? Secrete mucus. Why do you need to secrete mucus? Lubrication. It's a protective mechanism. Protective mechanism. What do you mean by protective mechanism? Good. Traps dust. Sorry, the dust. Traps dust. Again? Wait, wait, wait. I can't understand you. Traps dust, bacteria, and foreign particles. Okay. Traps the bacteria and foreign object like dust. Even carbon dioxide. That's why in people who has inhalational injury from smoke, and they die because of the edema of the larynx. When you do the autopsy, you'll see what? Soot there. Because the carbon the carbon smoke is being what? Phagocytose. Mucus. And this is now your alveolus, alveoli. You can appreciate the alveolar ducts, the alveolar sacs, and the alveolus. This one is a respiratory bronchial. Larger magnification. It's like ribbon-like. The alveolus is ribbon-like, lined by squamous cells, flattened cells. This is your type 2 pneumocyte, where it looks like onion skinning. There's onion skinning. So, congenital anomalies, since birth, either there is a genesis or hypoplasia of both lungs, one lung, or single lobe. In short, that lung did not develop 
Both lang, it's incompatible to life. Why? Because you need at least one to survive. Yes, no exchange of gases happening. One lung might be, but there will be difficulty of breathing. Single lobe, patient can still survive. Next, the tracheal and bronchial anomalies, atresia, stenosis, tracheoesophageal fistula, wherein either there's no connection between the trachea and the esophagus going down, or the trachea and esophagus are connected to each other. If there is mm -hmm. a pouch of the trachea, it's incompatible to life. But if there is fistula, you might see that the patient is what? Aspirating. Vascular anomalies. Uh, like what we discussed in the blood vessel, there might be a AV fistula. Emphysema, congenital lower inflation, especially those babies born prematurely or they have what aspiration problems or they have aspirated the meconium forgot cysts the lungs came from the forgot and when they are developing sometimes there will be fluid accumulation on the lung part of the lungs so it might have what? Cis. Cis Because the lungs are in contact. Yes. Congenital pulmonary airway malformation. Or this is what you call in pedia, they call it CPAM. This is uh it's like a trach tracheoesophageal fistula, but my or a AV malformation, something like that. Pulmonary sequestration. There is blobbing or blebbing from, of the lungs. So pulmonary hypoplasia. There's a defective development of the of both lung, resulting in decreased weight, volume, and asinine. Normally, ten percent of neonatal Autopsy. Secondary to space occupying lesion in the uterus, oligohydramnios, impaired fetal respiratory movement. Especially those, actually in pulmonary hypoplasia, those babies or fetus whose kidneys are not developed also. And most common this is seen also in uh, premature. For gut cysts, there is abnormal detachment of primitive foregut and most often located in the hilum or middle mediastinum. It could be bronchogenic, esophageal, or enteric. I told you there's accumulation of liquid. Microscopically, the cyst is lined by pseudostatified columnar epithelium with squamous metaplasia. That's why Mostly, it looks like in the a uh, they say it came from the lungs because of the lining epithelium. CPAM, hamartom, hamartomatous lesion of the lung. What is a hamartoma again? Bleeding. Hey. Again. What is a hamartoma? A hamartoma. Something like clot. For example, imagine that you were in in your high school, secondary school. Tables and chairs, right? You were sitting in your tables and chairs. When you go inside that classroom, the tables and chairs are fixed or arranged. Once you go out, what happens? It's in disarray. That is a hammer toma. It's still a table and chair, but the Arrangement is what? Different. So there are five types. CPAM type 1 is a, has a good prognosis and the most common with large cysts. CPAM, CPAM type 2, a poor prognosis, and there is a medium-sized cyst. 
Pulmonary sequestration, presence of a discrete mass of lung tissue without any normal connection to the airway system. The blood supply from aorta or its branches might be what? Seen there. So there is extra low bar, wherein external to the lungs and may be found in the thorax or mediastinum, or intra low bar sequestration found within the lung substance and are usually associated with recurrent localized infection or bronchiectasis. Next, atelectasis. There is incomplete expansion of the lungs, neonatal atelectasis, collapse of previously inflated lungs. So if it's a neonate, you need the neonate need to what? Breathe air first. And this is more common in neonate that is what? Intubated. Why? Sometimes you over uh, overpress or pump the air pump or the you give a lot of air. Which what? Rupture. Okay. Acquired atelectasis encountered principally in adults divided into resorption, orders of traction, compression, and contraction. So resorption atelectasis, there is a consequence of complete obstruction of an airway. Why? Because there's a obstruction. For example, you have a patient who swallowed the coin and went to the bronchus. That part of the bronchus where in there is obstruction will what? Shrink. Mm -hmm. And it will create what? Vacuum. So, for resorption atelectasis, the oxygen trap in the dependent alveoli without impairment blood flow to the affected alveolar walls. The mediastinum shift toward to atelectatic lung. So if there is a obstruction to the right, your air will shift to the right because it is being... I told you a while ago, there is vacuum space. And if there is vacuum, what will happen? What will happen if there is vacuum? What will happen if there is vacuum? What you mean partial? Collapse of the lungs, okay. But I'm asking, what will happen if there is vacuum? Like a what happens? Take up that space. So no Take up space. What does a vacuum cleaner do? do? Pulls it to what it does. Sucks in air. Again? Uh, it sucks up, right? Anything. Uh, That's why if there is a telectasis, it will go to the affected lungs. The trachea, the mediastinal part will go to the affected lungs. It will shift. <laughs> What? Look at Mike. Okay. Caused principally by excessive secretion or exudates within smaller bronchi. Most often found in bronchial asthma, chronic bronchitis, bronchiectasis, especially in post-operative states. That's why in before you undergo operation, you will be undergoing a CP clearance, a cardiopulmonary clearance. If you have asthma, mucosecreting disease, it's hard for them to operate you or they cannot operate you because of what? There might be mucus trapped. And remember, you will be undergoing a general anesthesia wherein it will paralyze all, all of your muscles or aspiration of foreign bodies. Compression atelectasis, pleural cavity is partially 
or completely filled by fluid exudate, tumor, blood, or air, pneumothorax. So, tension pneumothorax, when air impinges and threaten the function of the lungs and med mediastinum, wherein might be caused by a ruptured bulla or a ruptured bleb, most commonly encountered in patients with cardiac failure who develop pleural fluid also, patient with neoplastic effusion within the pleural cavity, and the mediastinum, because there is now impinging, it will shift away from the affected lungs. This is compression compared to resorption a while ago. Contraction atelectasis, local or generalized fibrotic changes in the lungs or pleural prevent full expansion. The only, uh, exa no, not only, the, there are a few examples for this. And number one is a previously scarred lung tissue or lung parenchyma like in TB. And the second one is tumor. So there will be reduced oxygenation and predisposes to infection, reversible disorder except that caused by contraction. Acute lung injury. An acute lung injury susceptible to lung injury appears to be heritable and response to survival depends on interaction of multiple loci on the different chromosome. Again, the mediators here are what? Your interleukin, the TNF, the TGF. It might produce congestion, edema, surfactant disruption, and atelectasis. And it may progress to acute respiratory disease syndrome or acute interstitial pneumonia. Actually, the only case of acute lung injury that I have seen is what? There was a pulmonary contusion secondary from a will, uh, steering wheel injury. Pulmonary edema can result from hemodynamic disturbance, hemodynamic or cardiogenic pulmonary edema. Direct increases in capillary permeability owing to microvascular injury. So in pulmonary edema, there will be now what? It's not having a fluid in the pleura, but inside the lungs. If you have fluid in the pleura, it's easy. You'll just do a thoracostomy, wherein you'll insert what? A tube in the thorax. But in pulmonary edema, because it's inside the lungs, you need what will be your management if you have pulmonary edema. So diuretics. So diuretics. So, diuretics. so hemodynamic pulmonary edema, Increased hydrostatic pressure, most common mechanism, left-sided congestive heart failure for pulmonale. Heavy, wet lungs in autopsy. Fluid accumulates initially at the basal region because of what? Gravity. Hydrostatic pressure is greater in this site, dependent edema. And mostly these people will what? Needs to sleep with a elevated pillow. Sometimes you need to ask how many pillows do you use when you sleep comfortably. One. Alveolar capillaries here are engorged. Intra alveolar granular pink precipitate is seen. There are alveolar microhemorrhages and hemosiderin macrophages, or what you call a heart failure cell cells may be seen. They are hemosiderin laden macrophages. We call it heart failure cells failure cell. And this is only seen in the lungs. If you see hemosiderin laden macrophages in other parts of the body, it means that there is hemorrhage, but this is not heart failure. Heart failure cells is only seen in the lungs. So hemodynamic edema, increase in hydrostatic pressure. Again, as I told you, core pulmonale, volume overload, pulmonary vein obstruction. Decrease oncotic pressure, hypoalbuminemia, so this is more seen in people with kidney problem or liver problem. Nephrotic syndrome, liver disease, or those people suffering from protein losing enteropathies. And lymphatic obstruction, but these are very, very rare. And this in lymphatic obstruction, 
those people with what? Uh, CA, those things. Any tissue or organs near the thorax. Edema due to microvascular injury, alveolar injury, infections, pneumonia, septicemia. They might be inhaled gases, oxygen, smoke. Liquid aspiration, gastric content, near drownings, drug and chemical, chemotherapeutic agents, bleomycin, other medication, ampotherosin B, heroin, kerosene, paraquat, shock, trauma, radiation, transfusion related. And this is what? Mostly poison. Those people, what do you mean by near drowning? You were in the water for too long but were brought up before you lost consciousness. You drowned. You drowned, but you didn't drown. Nearly drowned. <laughs> when you sl swallowed water when drowning, but survived. Uh, yes, I agree with Aniket, Tony, Akash. Suffocation is different from near drowning. But all of them is asphyxiation. You learn that during forensics. So, edema of undetermined origin. Because of high altitude, you need what? Increased oxygenation, neurogenic or central nervous system trauma, especially those who are undergoing what? Uh, generalized anesthesia. Edema caused by my, uh, microvascular injury, injury to capillaries of the alveolar septa, hydrostatic pressure usually not elevated, result from primary injury to the vascular endothelium or damage to alveolar epithelial cells Results in leakage of fluid and protein first into the alveoli. So this will what? Mostly, uh, this edema in my microvascular injury, I have seen in one case of transfusion-related reactions. 